A verse-by-verse -verse study in the book of Proverbs, ESV, with Irv Rish, chapter 8. What does Proverbs chapter 8 mean? Earlier in the book of Proverbs, wisdom was personified as a woman calling out in public to be heard, Proverbs 1 verses 20-21. Solomon once again uses this metaphor, depicting wisdom as she cries out from near and far for men to heed her call and listen to what she has to say. Wisdom's message is not obscured so that no one can find it. On the contrary, the basic principles of godly wisdom are so obvious that all people ought to hear and listen, Proverbs 8 verses 1 to 5. In contrast to those who are corrupt, crooked, or twisted, wisdom speaks noble, righteous, and true things. Her instruction is worth more than the finest gold, silver, and jewels. This is true in both practical and spiritual ways. A person who starts with nothing, but follows wisdom, has a better chance of becoming successful than a foolish person who stumbles into wealth. From an eternal perspective, this is also true, Mark 8 verse 36 The soul is worth infinitely more than anything we might obtain in life, Proverbs 8 verses 6 to 11. Wisdom teaches that the fear of the Lord is hatred of evil. This fear is the kind of reverential, worshipful obedience that we should rightly offer to God, Proverbs 1 verse 7. In contrast, that which disagrees with wisdom is pride, arrogance, and corruption, Proverbs 8 verses 12 to 13. For a leader to be truly benevolent and just, they must use godly wisdom. This is a national application of the same benefits wisdom offers to individual people, she loves those who love her. Once again extolling the value of godly wisdom, Solomon notes that the effects of honoring God are better than fine gold and choice silver, Proverbs 8 verses 14 to 21. Solomon also notes that wisdom existed before God created the earth and the heavens. The depiction here of wisdom as something established by God before even the creation of the world speaks to God's perfection. At the same time, wisdom poetically speaks of being alongside the Lord as a master workman. This wording has led some to interpret this passage as a statement from Jesus, who was more literally, with, God in the beginning, John 1 verse 1. However, this is a different context and not a literal representation of Christ. Rather, wisdom is an intrinsic part of how God created and enjoyed His work, Proverbs 8 verses 22-31. Returning to the theme of advice, wisdom urges human beings to listen to her and promises blessings to those who respond positively. She promises life to those who listen to her as well as favor from the Lord. However, those who fail to find wisdom, those who ignore God's teaching inflict injury on themselves and love death. They will ultimately be separated from God, Proverbs 8 verses 32-36. Chapter Context Thus far in Proverbs, Solomon has spoken about the virtues of wisdom and the need to acquire it and live by it. He has also warned about the dangers of rejecting wisdom. Chapter 7 ended with a description of a promiscuous woman seducing a foolish young man. Now, in Chapter 8, he lets wisdom speak, once again personified as a woman. She speaks about her existence before creation and her gift of life to all who find her. This analogy continues into chapter 9. Verse by verse. Verse 1. Does not wisdom call, does not understanding raise her voice? This verse asks two rhetorical questions. These are meant to imply that wisdom is not some far-off or unattainable thing. Rather, daily life and experience should inspire everyone to seek wisdom, and to see its benefits. The female personification of wisdom here contrasts sharply with the prostitute, Proverbs 7 verse 10, who went into the streets in search of the foolish young man whom she seduced. The adulterous woman wanted to draw her victim into evil, but wisdom personified as a woman wants to help those who heed her call. She has many benefits that she wants to impart. The Bible offers an ongoing invitation to sinful men and women to be wise and believe on Jesus for salvation. The wisdom of God is found in Jesus Christ. Colossians 2 verse 3 says that in Christ, are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. 
After describing the wisdom of the world as opposing God, the Apostle Paul identified Christ as wisdom from God, 1 Corinthians 1 verse 30. The Lord counsels in Jeremiah 9 verses 23-24, Let not the wise man boast in his wisdom, let not the mighty man boast in his might, let not the rich man boast in his riches, but let him who boasts boast in this, that he understands and knows me. The Bible calls upon us to find true wisdom in the Lord. Context Summary Proverbs 8 verses 1-11 comes immediately after a potent warning about a promiscuous, seductive woman. Here, Solomon again presents a woman, this time as wisdom personified, Proverbs 1 verse 20. She calls from everywhere to men to learn prudence and sense. She cites the value of learning from her. Her words are noble, right, true, righteous, and honest. Wisdom is far greater than silver, choice gold, jewels, and everything else that can be compared with her. Verse 2. On the heights beside the way, at the crossroads she takes her stand. In this verse Solomon depicts poetic locations where wisdom, personified in a woman, calls out. The questions asked in the prior verse imply that wisdom's call is not hidden, Proverbs 8 verse 1. That idea is highlighted here, she takes up her position where people travel and congregate. Whether people travel over hilltops or meet at intersections, they cannot fail to hear her call. Similarly, the Gospel's call to salvation reaches people where they are. The hills are part of the creation that God has established as a witness to His existence and wisdom. In Psalm 8 verse 1 David exclaimed, O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth! Romans 1 verses 19-20 points out that creation offers sufficient evidence that God exists and reveals His eternal power and divine nature. Having rejected the witness of creation, unbelievers are without excuse. Today, too, the Gospel calls upon people in the hill country and in the busy intersections to believe on Jesus, the source of wisdom. For some in nations with a Christian heritage, anyone who has a radio can hear the call of the Gospel wherever he may be. Verse 3. Beside the gates in front of the town at the entrance of the portals she cries aloud. This continues a poetic description of wisdom as a woman, making her presence obvious to mankind. According to the last two verses, Proverbs 8 verses 1 to 2, her presence is not hidden, and she calls out, Proverbs 8 verse 4, from conspicuous places. Here, she speaks beside the gates at the town's entrance. This is where business and court cases were decided. Wisdom was certainly needed there as the town's elders convened to conduct business and settle legal matters. Solomon knew by personal experience that wisdom is needed to settle legal matters. He had asked the Lord for the wisdom to govern the Lord's people, 1 Kings 3 verses 7-9, and the Lord granted his request. After deciding a case between two women over the custody of a child, all Israel heard of the judgment that the king had rendered, and they stood in awe of the king, because they perceived that the wisdom of God was in him to do justice, 1 Kings 3 verse 28. The apostles carried the gospel to cities, where they urged people to trust in Christ. Those who believed experienced a transformation of mind as well as heart. Their darkened minds were enlightened by the Holy Spirit, Ephesians 1 verse 18. Verse 4. To you, O men, I call and my cry is to the children of man. In Proverbs 7 we read about the adulteress who searched for someone who would heed her invitation to do evil. Here, we read that wisdom calls to mankind. The prior verses in this chapter served as an introduction to wisdom, emphasizing how she actively seeks to reach humanity, Proverbs 8 verses 1 to 3. This begins a lengthy soliloquy by wisdom in which she invites mankind to heed her call. This invitation previews Jesus' call to mankind to believe on him. He extended his call to everyone by saying, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest, Matthew 11 verse 28. Near the close of his earthly ministry, Jesus wept outside Jerusalem and said, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. 
How often would I have gathered your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. Matthew 23 verse 37 The Bible closes with a similar invitation, The Spirit and the Bride say, Come. And let the one who hears say, Come. And let the one who is thirsty come, let the one who desires take the water of life without price, Revelation 22 verse 17. Verse 5. O simple ones, learn prudence, O fools, learn sense. Wisdom, poetically imaged as a woman calling out to all mankind, Proverbs 8 verses 1 to 4, invites human beings to learn. Specifically, this is a warning not to be lazy or complacent about one's knowledge. The word translated, simple, here is from the root pti, which implies someone young, gullible, or easy to manipulate. Likewise, prudence comes from the root term orma, which essentially means the opposite, sense, wisdom, shrewdness, and so forth. Despite the claims of critics, Scripture does not encourage blind, mindless belief in God. Rather, as shown here, it demands that humanity sensibly follow what's clearly seen, Psalm 19 verse 1, Romans 1 verses 18 to 20, to a reasonable conclusion. In this context, the most important aspect of prudence is the possession of high moral values. The call of the adulterous woman encouraged her targeted client to abandon morals, Proverbs 7 verses 18 to 19, wisdom's call is the opposite. When Jesus ministered on earth, he called sinners to repent, and he empowered them to leave their evil lifestyle behind. He told the woman caught in adultery to, Go, and from now on sin no more, John 8 verse 11. When Zacchaeus trusted in Christ, he was prepared to perform restitution. He said, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I restore it fourfold, Luke 19 verse 8. Even fools are invited to obtain sense. It is foolish to disbelieve God and continue in sin, but when a fool responds to Jesus' invitation to receive salvation, he obtains sense. Christianity enables saved sinners to see life clearly and live righteously, 1 Corinthians 2 verse 14. Verse 6. Here, for I will speak noble things, and from my lips will come what is right. Mankind is openly invited, by wisdom, to heed what she says, Proverbs 8 verses 1 to 4. Her words dispense teachings described using the word aniged, most literally meaning something strongly contrasted or clear. In practice, the term is applied to leaders, rulers, and those otherwise, above, their peers in some way. That clarity, superiority, and connection to that which is morally prudent, Proverbs 8 verse 5, results in the typical English translation of noble. Parallel to that, wisdom's words are depicted as truth, and will be contrasted to speech which is, crooked, Proverbs 8 verse 8. The Bible is the only infallible source of wisdom about God, the world around us, ourselves, heaven and hell, the way to God, personal relationships, and how to live a truly meaningful life. Science may impart knowledge on many topics, but the Bible imparts eternal truths. Further, whatever biblical wisdom imparts is true. It is, breathed out by God, 2 Timothy 3 verse 16. Jesus is the truth, John 14 verse 6. In his high priestly prayer Jesus asked the Father to sanctify believers in the truth. He added, Your word is truth, John 17 verse 17. The Bible presents words that are faultless. Joshua told Israel, You know in your hearts and souls, all of you, that not one word has failed of all the good things that the Lord your God promised concerning you. All have come to pass for you, not one of them has failed, Joshua 23 verse 14. Verse 7. For my mouth will utter truth, wickedness is an abomination to my lips. This verse reinforces the fact that godly wisdom speaks only the truth. Personified as a woman, she also affirms that evil is something contrary to her message. Prior verses described wise words as, noble, Proverbs 8 verse 6, and upcoming statements will contrast truthful wisdom with speech that is, twisted, 
Proverbs 8 verse 8. Jesus spoke only the truth. 1 Peter 2 verse 22 affirms, He committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. The Bible exhorts believers to speak the truth in love, Ephesians 4 verse 15, and to speak the truth with our neighbors, Ephesians 4 verse 25. In the same chapter, the Apostle Paul commands, Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up, as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear, Ephesians 4 verse 29. Colossians 3 verses 8 to 9 exhorts, But now you must put them all away, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and obscene talk from your mouth. Do not lie to one another. In his teaching on wisdom James points out, from the same mouth come blessing and cursing. He argues, My brothers, these things ought not to be so, James 3 verse 10. Verse 8. All the words of my mouth are righteous, there is nothing twisted or crooked in them. In this passage, Solomon has poetically imagined a woman, the embodiment of wisdom, speaking to anyone who will hear, Proverbs 8 verses 1 to 3. In the prior verse, this personification of godly wisdom claimed to speak only truth and moral goodness, Proverbs 8 verse 7. The term translated, twisted, is used elsewhere in Scripture to imply sins like deceit, lying, and fraud, Job 5 verse 13. It implies something warped from the way it ought to be, as a liar's words are, twisted, around. The word rendered in English as, crooked, can also be translated as, perverted, and implies a similar mangling of words and intentions, Proverbs 2 verse 15. Godly wisdom, in contrast, contains nothing that deviates from reality. As an expression of God's own perfection, Proverbs 8 verse 22, true wisdom is never incorrect and never deceptive, though it might require careful effort to fully understand, Proverbs 8 verse 17. Once a person gains that level of understanding, godly wisdom seems straightforward and obvious, Proverbs 8 verse 9. Verse 9. They are all straight to him who understands and right to those who find knowledge. Prior verses compared the truthfulness of godly wisdom to speech which is corrupt, crooked, or false, Proverbs 8 verse 8. Submission to God and His truth is presented in the Bible as a prerequisite for true discernment, John 7 verse 17. Those who have been enlightened by the Holy Spirit can more clearly understand God's Word, 1 Corinthians 2 verse 14. However, those who have not trusted in Christ, the source of all wisdom, fail to understand the Bible. The Apostle Paul's words in 2 Corinthians 4 verses 3-4 affirm this fact. He writes, And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, Satan, has blinded the minds of the unbelievers, to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. Also, in 1 Corinthians 2 verses 7-10, Paul writes, But we impart a secret and hidden wisdom of God, which God decreed before the ages for our glory. None of the rulers of this age understood this. But as it is written, What no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined, what God has prepared for those who love Him, these things God has revealed to us through the Spirit. Verse 10 Take my instruction instead of silver and knowledge rather than choice gold. Wisdom, Proverbs 8 verses 1 to 4, offers a choice between her instruction and silver and choice gold. Which is better? Wealth does not guarantee happiness or benefit anyone beyond the grave. Even billionaires die and leave their wealth behind. Merely having money does not make a person wise enough to keep those riches. However, a person who is truly wise has a better opportunity for success and prosperity, Proverbs 8 verse 18. Wisdom can offer benefits which money literally cannot buy, Proverbs 8 verse 11. Jesus' story about a rich man who died and went to the place of suffering illustrates this truth, Luke 16 verses 19 to 31. Paul tells Timothy to warn those who long to be rich that, we brought nothing into the world, and we cannot take anything out of the world, 1 Timothy 6 verse 7. He adds, But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation, into a snare, 
into many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction, 1 Timothy 6 verse 9. King David understood the truth that the value of God's word far exceeds the value of silver and gold. He writes, The rules of the Lord are true, and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold, Psalm 19 verses 9 to 10. Verse 11. For wisdom is better than jewels, and all that you may desire cannot compare with her. There are some things which money literally cannot buy, godly wisdom and its benefits are among these. Humanity places great value on rare gems and metals. Red beryl, a scarce mineral, has a market value more than 1,000 times that of gold. Muscovite, another gemstone, is even rarer and worth almost 4,000 times as much as gold. Gold, itself, is typically valued about 15 times as much as silver. Rare objects or possessions, other than jewels, are also highly valued. If asked what he most wants to own, a typical person may respond by naming an extremely expensive car, a mansion, or a private island. However, none of these carries the value of wisdom. Solomon was blessed when God asked him to make a request, rather than asking for wealth or power, Solomon asked for wisdom, 1 Kings 3 verses 5 to 12. Not only was he gifted with brilliance, Solomon also found worldly success and prosperity, in no small part due to that wisdom, 1 Kings 3 verses 13 to 14. Jesus asks in Luke 9 verse 25, For what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses or forfeits himself? A child of God in possession of God's word may have only a modest income or even no income, but he is wealthier than all the billionaires combined who lack God's word. Verse 12. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence, and I find knowledge and discretion. In this verse wisdom is linked to a specific set of virtues, prudence, knowledge, and discretion. These are also mentioned in Proverbs 1 verse 4. Prudence is from a Hebrew word meaning sense and shrewdness. In verse 5, this was contrasted with someone gullible or naive, Proverbs 8 verse 5. Knowledge, in the book of Proverbs, means information that's been learned and retained, an accumulation of facts. Discretion, is from a Hebrew word implying purpose, discretion, or planning, the term is closely related to wisdom, which is a capacity to make godly decisions based on knowledge. The secular world may tout its intelligence by pointing to scientific inventions like smartphones and satellites, but the Lord gives His people discretion to know the meaning of life and the will of God, 1 Corinthians 2 verse 14. Further, those who know Christ, the source of wisdom, know God personally and perceive what His plan is for the future. Believers also have a God-directed potential to make more responsible decisions. They can choose between right and wrong and even between what is good and what is best. In Ephesians 5 verses 15-17 Paul exhorts, Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise but as wise, making the best use of the time, because the days are evil. Therefore do not be foolish, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Context Summary Proverbs 8 verses 12-21 records more words from the personification of wisdom. She speaks about the value she imparts to those who find her. Contrary to what the adulterous woman of Proverbs 7 offers, poverty and disgrace, wisdom offers true riches, honor, and an inheritance. Verse 13. The fear of the Lord is hatred of evil, pride and arrogance and the way of evil and perverted speech I hate. Scripture notes that, fear, of God is a crucial aspect of wisdom and learning, Proverbs 1 verse 7. The term, fear, as used in this expression, is not about abject terror or panic. Rather, fear of God involves a submissive, respectful honor. There can be a sense of apprehension, much as one can have a healthy fear of things like fire or machinery, but not a cowering fright. This verse supplies another piece of context for understanding what the fear of the Lord really means. At its core, this perspective means recognizing God's holiness and goodness, and pursuing it. 
it means hating and rejecting whatever is opposed to him. Fear of the Lord causes his people to hate evil. This includes a rejection of pride, arrogance, and corrupt speech. Sin is not simply a mistake. It is a horrendous offense against God. We should not tolerate sin in our lives, we should hate it as God does. The Apostle John encourages us in 1 John 1 verse 9 to confess our sins. Confess means to say the same thing about sin that God says about it, to have same attitude toward sin that He has. Our hatred of sin intensifies if we reflect on the fact that Christ suffered misery and death because of our sin, 1 Corinthians 15 verse 3. If we fear the Lord, we will also hate pride and arrogance. These immoral attitudes marked Lucifer's rebellion against God. Isaiah 14 verses 12-14 records his arrogant scheme to push God off his throne and take possession of it. Lucifer said, I will make myself like the Most High, Isaiah 14 verse 14. His proud intention was marked by corrupt speech, and Jesus identified him as, a liar and the father of lies, John 8 verse 44. Verse 14. I have counsel and sound wisdom, I have insight, I have strength. Contrary to arrogant people who are foolish liars, wisdom offers reliable truth that has powerful effects. This is demonstrated in one way by the comparison in Proverbs 8 verses 10 to 11. There are things money cannot buy, so wisdom is worth more than precious metals or jewels. And yet, riches are easier to obtain through wisdom. Whether one considers earthly matters or eternal ones, godly wisdom is infinitely more valuable than material wealth, Mark 8 verse 36, Luke 12 verses 19 to 20. Jesus is the personification of wisdom. Isaiah 9 verse 6 identifies him as wonderful counselor and mighty God. As such, he always instructs us to pursue the right path and do the right thing. Because he has infallible insight and sound wisdom, he knows what is best for us and works everything for our good, Romans 8 verses 28 to 30. Because he has immeasurable strength, he keeps us in his grip, John 10 verse 28, exercises all authority in heaven and earth on our behalf as we spread the gospel, Matthew 28 verses 18 to 20, and enables us to draw strength from him in every circumstance. The Apostle Paul testifies in Philippians 4 verses 12 to 13, I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. The godly wisdom possessed by Paul gave him access to strength far beyond what would have been possible otherwise. Verse 15. By me kings reign and rulers decree what is just. In this passage, wisdom speaks, poetically personified as a woman who calls out to any who will listen, Proverbs 8 verses 1 to 4. Godly wisdom, lived out and explained in the life of Jesus, establishes kings on their thrones and enables rulers to introduce laws that are just. History has made it clear that godliness is not always found in rulers, but godly wisdom is what makes them just. Solomon recognized that the Lord is the source of wisdom, and he also recognized that he needed wisdom from the Lord to rule well as Israel's king. He told the Lord, And now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of David my father, give your servant therefore an understanding mind to govern your people, 1 Kings 3 verses 7 and 9. That request made Solomon a profoundly capable leader, 1 Kings 3 verses 11 to 14. The Apostle Paul points out in Romans 13 verse 1 that, there is no authority except from God. An arrogant ruler may not admit that his position of power is by God's appointment. However, no earthly authority exists except by divine appointment, or, at the very least, divine tolerance. Obviously, many kings in Israel's history did not honor God by ruling according to His will, and they were unwilling to submit to His wisdom. Similarly, many rulers today fail to seek God and His wisdom in the administration of their terms of office. Verse 16. By me princes rule and nobles, all who govern justly. 
The voice speaking in these verses is that of wisdom, personified as a woman, Proverbs 8 verses 1 to 4. Continuing his thought that wisdom establishes the powers of government, Solomon says that by wisdom, princes rule, and nobles, all who govern justly. This is true in the sense that, just rulers are those who apply godly wisdom. It is also true in that God, the ultimate source of all wisdom, is ultimately sovereign over who rules. This truth becomes apparent when we examine the lives of Joseph and Moses. In his wisdom, God determined that Joseph would be taken from his homeland to Egypt and from a prison in Egypt to occupy the position of second in command in Egypt. Only God could arrange for someone to rise from a dungeon to a throne. Joseph recognized God's hand in all this. When his brothers feared for their lives because of their ill treatment of Joseph, Joseph said, Do not fear, for am I in the place of God? As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good, to bring it about that many people should be kept alive, as they are today, Genesis 50 verses 19-20. God used Joseph to keep alive the Hebrew race, through whom the Messiah would come. Another example of divine appointment is Moses. God rescued him from the Nile River to make him a prince in Egypt and then the leader of the Hebrews who guided them through the desert to the Promised Land. Moses recognized that he was inadequate for the job of leading Israel, but the Lord said, I will send you to Pharaoh that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt, Exodus 3 verse 10. Verse 17. I love those who love me and those who seek me diligently find me. Wisdom, personified as a woman calling out to be heard, Proverbs 8 verses 1 to 4, states, I love those who love me. In its ancient usage, the concept of love meant more than mere emotion. In fact, the primary meaning of love was in terms of preference in action. With that context, it's easy to see how wisdom can love those who love wisdom. When we act according to godly wisdom, that which is true, Proverbs 8 verses 6 to 9, we are more likely to see good results, Proverbs 8 verses 10 to 11, 18. Love, in connection with God, also has profound meaning. The love of Jesus is beyond compare. It is a selfless, sacrificial love. John 13 verse 1 describes Jesus as, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. Certainly, the most significant display of Jesus' love for us was his death on the cross. The Apostle Paul writes in Galatians 2 verse 20, The life I now live in the flesh I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Jesus' love for us kindles in us a reciprocal love for him. The Apostle John writes, We love because he first loved us, 1 John 4 verse 19. Wisdom promises to be found by those who diligently seek her. Jeremiah 29 verse 13 applies the same idea to those who seek God, in general, stating, You will seek me and find me, when you seek me with all your heart. The following verse promises, I will be found by you, Jeremiah 29 verse 14. Jesus, the source of all wisdom, invited the lost to come to him. He said, All that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never cast out, John 6 verse 37. God's truth is not hidden, Romans 1 verses 18 to 20, from those who sincerely wish to find it, Matthew 7 verses 7 to 8. Verse 18. Riches and honor are with me, enduring wealth and righteousness. Wisdom is the ability to apply knowledge of the truth, Proverbs 8 verses 6 to 9. That connection to what is real and true gives a person a much greater likelihood of success and prosperity. A person who is poor, but wise, is more likely to become successful than a foolish person born into wealth is to maintain their fortune. Most Old Testament promises of earthly prosperity are explicitly applied to Israel, Deuteronomy 28 verses 1 to 14. In a broader sense, Jesus mentioned true riches in Luke 16 verse 11 as the reward of faithful service to God. He also labeled anyone who stockpiles earthly wealth but skimps towards God as foolish, Luke 12 verses 16 to 21. Moses was considered wise for correctly choosing God over earthly success. 
he considered the reproach of Christ greater wealth than the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking to the reward. Hebrews 11 verse 26. In his message to the Laodicean church, Jesus condemns the church's smug confidence in its wealth. He states, You say, I am rich, I have prospered, and I need nothing, Revelation 3 verse 17. He says the church is actually poor, Revelation 3 verse 17, and calls upon the church to, Buy from me gold refined by the fire, so that you may be rich, Revelation 3 verse 18. This is another reference to the fact that heavenly things, including godly wisdom, are more valuable than anything we could obtain on earth. Verse 19. My fruit is better than gold, even fine gold and my yield than choice silver. In this section, wisdom is speaking as a metaphorical woman, calling out to make herself known, Proverbs 8 verses 1 to 4. What wisdom offers is of infinitely greater value than anything we could obtain on earth. Gold has often been the reference point for value, both poetically and literally. Even so, there have been material substances considered even more valuable. Certain gemstones, such as red beryl or muscovite, are worth thousands of times more than gold by weight. And yet, the value of godly wisdom, Proverbs 1 verse 7, outweighs all of those, Proverbs 8 verses 10 to 11. The ultimate expression of godly wisdom is found in the person of Jesus Christ. To those who have faith in Him, He offers forgiveness, abundant and everlasting life, assurance of salvation, His constant presence, peace, joy, access to the Father, grace to help in time of need, guidance, provision for daily needs, security, and rewards. Those rewards include an incorruptible crown, 1 Corinthians 9 verse 25, a crown of life, James 1 verse 12, a crown of righteousness, 2 Timothy 4 verse 8, and a crown of glory, 1 Peter 5 verse 4. Material wealth is uncertain and temporal, but the wealth Jesus gives those who believe on Him is eternal. Furthermore, believers have an inheritance that is, imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, that is kept in heaven for them, 1 Peter 1 verse 4. Someday believers will see Jesus as He is and be like Him, 1 John 3 verse 2. No amount of worldly wealth can purchase what believers have in Christ. As a hymn writer testified, I'd rather have Jesus than silver and gold. Verse 20. I walk in the way of righteousness in the paths of justice. This verse continues to speak the words of wisdom, personified as a woman, Proverbs 8 verses 1 to 4. The word walk conveys the sense of consistency and habit. Merely stumbling across truth by accident is not the same as a committed approach to truth, Proverbs 3 verses 21 to 24. Given the value of godly wisdom, Proverbs 8 verses 18 to 19, it's something worth approaching with dedicated effort, Proverbs 8 verse 17. When the Lord Jesus ministered on earth, he conducted himself consistently in a righteous and just manner. He always did what was just or right for those who needed his help. His righteousness was beyond incrimination. In fact, his reputation was so secure that he could boldly dare his enemies by asking, Which one of you convicts me of sin? John 8 verse 46. The Apostle Paul testified that Jesus knew no sin, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21, and the Apostle Peter described Jesus as, a lamb without blemish or spot, 1 Peter 1 verse 19. Peter also said plainly, he, Jesus, committed no sin, 1 Peter 2 verse 22. While absolute perfection is impossible for us, all who believe on Jesus receive a positional righteousness, we have become the righteousness of God in Him, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21. Also, we have a practical righteousness. 1 Peter 2 verse 24 states, He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. Verse 21. Granting an inheritance to those who love me and filling their treasuries. Wisdom, speaking metaphorically, Proverbs 8 verses 1 to 4, promises to grant an inheritance full of treasures to those who love her. A wise person knows how to save and keep what he earns or reaps. 
he is not wasteful. This is one of the reasons why wisdom is associated with success and prosperity, Proverbs 8 verses 17-19, though earthly success is never guaranteed, making wise choices more often leads to positive results. There is also a sense in which believers have received a rich inheritance from Jesus Christ. The Apostle Peter describes this inheritance as, imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, 1 Peter 1 verse 4. He adds that it is guarded in heaven for us. Whatever wealth we accumulate or inherit on earth is subject to theft, loss, or deterioration. Further, security measures may fail to keep it, but in heaven our inheritance is stable and secure. Jesus cautioned, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal, Matthew 6 verses 19-20. Wisdom teaches a person to heed Jesus' counsel. Verse 22. The Lord possessed me at the beginning of His work, the first of His acts of old. Wisdom is an essential part of who God is, so wisdom existed before God created the heavens and the earth, Genesis 1 verse 1. The Lord's display of wisdom is clearly seen in creation, identified here as, the first thing He created. This passage celebrates the eternal and fundamental truth of godly wisdom. In His answer to Job, Job 38, 41, the Lord clearly referred to His creative wisdom. He also connected that attribute to His initial creation of the world. He laid the earth's foundations, Job 38 verses 4-6. He created the sea and clouds, Job 38 verses 8 to 11, light and darkness, Job 38 verses 12 to 21, snow, hail, and rain, Job 38 verses 22 to 30, stars, Job 38 verses 31 to 33, animals and birds, Job 38 colon 39, 41 colon 34. When the Apostle Paul walked through Athens, he was greatly disturbed by the ignorance of supposedly wise philosophers. They had erected idols everywhere, Acts 17 verse 16. When he had opportunity to address those philosophers, Paul identified the only wise God and referred to his creative power. Paul told the Athenians he had observed the objects of their worship as he passed through the city. He had observed an altar to the unknown God, who he proclaimed as, the God who made the world and everything in it, Acts 17 verse 24. Only God had the wisdom to create all things. Context Summary Proverbs 8 verses 22 to 31 pays tribute to wisdom as having existed from the very beginning of beginnings. In this chapter, wisdom speaks as a woman, in a poetic style used by Solomon. Since the wisdom in question is godly truth, rooted in the knowledge and nature of God, that wisdom predates the creation of the world and everything in it. Like God's goodness and justice, His wisdom has always been part of who He is and how He creates. Verse 23. Ages ago I was set up, at the first, before the beginning of the earth. Once again, wisdom is seen as existing before the earth was created, Proverbs 8 verse 22. God's wisdom is infinite and eternal. The words, set up, may be translated as, established, or, installed. The root Hebrew term, nasak, is also used in reference to casting such as with molten metal. Wisdom's establishment was not haphazard, or accidental, or flimsy. God's eternal wisdom was present and sure before there was any universe, at all. It did not begin in an academic classroom or in the halls of government or in the mind of a renowned philosopher. Wisdom began with God. Without Him, there would be no wisdom. However, it pleases God to grant wisdom to those who believe on His Son Jesus. The Apostle Paul urged the Colossian believers to avoid being deluded by false teachers, because in Christ, are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge, Colossians 2 verse 3. Because believers are linked by faith to Christ, they can, walk in wisdom toward outsiders, making the best use of the time, Colossians 4 verse 5. Jesus embodied perfect wisdom, and He was the agent through which everything came into existence. 
John 1 verses 2-3 states, He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. Verse 24. When there were no depths I was brought forth, when there were no springs abounding with water. This continues a series of statements made by wisdom, personified by Solomon as a woman, Proverbs 8 verses 1-4. In this verse Solomon again points out that wisdom existed before the creation of the universe. The Bible's first reference to water is in Genesis 1 verse 2, yet godly wisdom had been solidified before even then, Proverbs 8 verse 23. Genesis 1 verses 6-8 reports that on the second day of creation, God said, Let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. And God made the expanse and separated the waters that were under the expanse from the waters that were above the expanse. And it was so. And God called the expanse heaven. Verse 25. Before the mountains had been shaped, before the hills, I was brought forth. On the third day of creation God created the dry land, including mountains and hills, Genesis 1 verse 9. However, wisdom existed even before God formed the mountains and hills, Proverbs 8 verses 22-24. As Solomon continues to portray wisdom as a woman, calling out to all men, Proverbs 8 verses 1-4, he emphasizes that wisdom has always been a part of God's nature. Wise individuals marvel at the structure of high mountains and rolling hills, but they look for help from the Creator. The psalmist wrote, I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth, Psalm 121 verses 1-2. Romans 1 verses 18-23 indicts nature worshippers as rejecting the Creator and worshipping nature instead. Paul writes, Their foolish hearts were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools, and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images resembling mortal man and birds and animals and creeping things, Romans 1 verses 21-23. If we marvel at the beauty and strength of mountains and hills, should we not marvel more at the wisdom God showed in creating these natural wonders? Verse 26. Before He had made the earth with its fields or the first of the dust of the world. Solomon affirms in this verse that wisdom existed before God created the earth with its fields. The fields would be earth's open country. Standing atop a mountain that rises over the great plains, one can be overwhelmed with the thought of God's infinite wisdom. This verse continues to express how wisdom, as a part of God's perfection, existed long before even the creation of the world, Proverbs 8 verses 22-25. Opinions vary regarding the meaning of, the dust of the world. Some believe this expression refers to heaps of dirt clods. Others think it refers to the sum of the atoms of dust. Still others take the expression to refer to Genesis 2 verse 7 that tells us, God formed the man of dust from the ground, and made him alive. In a humorous modern-day parable, a scientist approaches God to claim he can make life even better than God can. To prove it, the scientist challenges God to a life creation contest. God accepts the challenge, but says that to be fair, they will both need to create that life just as life began, out of dirt. The scientist agrees and stoops down to pick up a handful of soil. God stops him, saying, Oh, no, you go make your own dirt. In his finite wisdom, man can plant seed in the ground that God made and grow plants and crops, but God in His infinite wisdom made the ground and everything that springs from it. Verse 27. When He established the heavens, I was there, when He drew a circle on the face of the deep. God possessed wisdom before He established the heavens and stretched the sky over the horizon. Job 22 verse 14 says God walks on the vault of heaven. Vault in that part of Job is another way of referring to the th circle referenced in this verse. This continues Solomon's poetic depiction of wisdom, calling out to mankind, Proverbs 8 verses 1-4, and declaring a history longer than that of creation, Proverbs 8 verses 22-26. The sky above with its clouds has covered the earth for ages and has fascinated meteorologists. 
Jesus referred to the sky in Matthew 16. When the Pharisees and Sadducees asked him for a sign from heaven, Jesus replied, When it is evening, you say, It will be fair weather for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be stormy today, for the sky is red and threatening. You know how to interpret the appearance of the sky, but you cannot interpret the signs of the times, Matthew 16 verses 2-3. Sky watchers would do well to look by faith beyond the sky to see the one who created all things, including the sky, Psalm 19 verse 1. Verse 28 that when he made firm the skies above, when he established the fountains of the deep. This verse says plainly that wisdom existed when God made the skies and vast subterranean reservoirs of water. In this passage, wisdom has declared an eternal existence, Proverbs 8 verses 22-27 as part of the perfect nature of God. Not only was everything in the universe made by God, it was made according to His perfect wisdom. Atheists deny the existence of God and therefore reject the concept of a divine creator. A common rationale for rejecting God is that a giant molecular cloud collapsed in the ancient past, forming our sun and eventually other matter. From there, they say, life naturally occurred. This evokes a modern-day parable about a scientist who challenged God to a creation contest. According to the scientist, he understood the natural mechanisms needed to create life, making God unnecessary. God accepted the challenge, but on the condition they both form new life from dirt. The scientist agreed and bent down to scoop up a handful of soil. God interrupted him, however, saying, Oh, no, you go get your own dirt. Even if one accepts that earth, life, and all we see was formed through some kind of natural process, one still has to ask how did that molecular cloud originate? Where did the components come from? How did they come to be arranged so perfectly and precisely as to achieve these results? Sooner or later, one must get your own dirt and explain where it all came from. Colossians insists that in Christ are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge, Colossians 2 verse 3, and points out that he holds all created things together, Colossians 1 verse 17. John 1 verse 3 affirms that all things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Verse 29. When he assigned to the sea its limit so that the waters might not transgress his command when he marked out the foundations of the earth. According to this verse, Wisdom existed before God placed a limit on the sea. This is part of a long statement made by wisdom, personified by Solomon as a woman, declaring an eternal existence as part of God's nature, Proverbs 8 verses 22-28. Wisdom is not a gradual development of the universe or something God grew into. It is a natural, intrinsic part of who He is. In Bible times, references to the sea, are almost always to the Mediterranean Sea. However, the statement about the sea's limit applies to every sea and ocean. In His wisdom the Lord decreed that every sea and ocean would stop short of the land that borders it. If there were no boundaries, the water from a sea or ocean would engulf the land and doom its inhabitants. Also, in His wisdom, the Lord marked out the foundations of the earth. He created the dry land as well as the waters. Job 38 verses 8 to 11 records God's questioning Job. He asks, Who shut in the sea with doors when it burst out from the womb, when I made clouds its garment and thick darkness its swaddling band, and prescribed limits for it and set bars and doors, and said, Thus far shall you come and no farther, and here shall your proud waters be stayed? Verse 30. Then I was beside him, like a master workman, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing before him always. In this passage, Solomon has poetically described wisdom as a woman calling out to all men, Proverbs 8 verses 1 to 4. That declaration includes the fact that wisdom is not an invention of God. Rather, godly wisdom has always been a part of God's nature. Truth was established, so to speak, Proverbs 8 verse 23, before the creation of the universe, Proverbs 8 verses 24 to 29. The terminology used here depicts God and wisdom enjoying close fellowship. For that reason, 
some interpret this passage as a depiction of Jesus, called, the Word, in John 1. John 1 verses 1-2 portrays Jesus, the Word, as present with God in the beginning of beginnings. The word, with, in John 1 verse 2 is the Greek word pros, meaning, toward. Christ was toward God, suggesting face-to-face -face fellowship between the Father and the Son. Likewise, John 1 verse 3 states, All things were made through Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. The word for, God, in Genesis 1 verse 1 is Elohim, a plural form of the noun, suggesting the Trinity was in the beginning before the universe was created. However, the context of the passage itself does not suggest that Solomon means to identify wisdom, literally, as Jesus. While Jesus, as God, is a perfect representation of godly wisdom, Hebrews 1 verse 3, the poetry used here in Proverbs is exactly that. This is a metaphor for the nature of godly wisdom, not a direct reference to Jesus. Verse 31. Rejoicing in his inhabited world and delighting in the children of man. Wisdom, something God possessed even before the creation of the world, Proverbs 8 verses 22-30, continues to speak in Solomon's metaphor begun in verse 1, Proverbs 8 verses 1-4. Genesis 1 describes God's work of creating everything, including the creation of our first parents, and after creating everything, God saw everything that He had made, and behold, it was very good, Genesis 1 verse 31. Unfortunately, sin entered humanity when Eve fell prey to the devil's temptation and Adam joined her in rejecting God's will. That sin alienated human beings from God, and the human condition soon deteriorated to the point where, the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intention of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Genesis 6 verse 5. Despite the sin that marks every human being today, God loves us and demonstrated his love by giving his Son on the cross as our Redeemer and Reconciler. Romans 5 verse 8, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 19. Verse 32. And now, O sons, listen to me, blessed are those who keep my ways. Just as she called at the beginning of the chapter, Proverbs 8 verses 1 to 4, at the end of the chapter wisdom calls upon Solomon's sons to listen to her and walk in her ways. This personification of wisdom as a woman echoes early portions of the book of Proverbs, Proverbs 1 verses 20 to 21. It also contrasts chapter 7's depiction of a promiscuous, tempting woman, Proverbs 7 verses 10 to 15. God's Word imparts wisdom, and God's Son imparts wisdom. But to gain wisdom a person must listen and obey. Jesus compared those who hear His words and obey them to a wise man who built his house on a rock. The house withstood torrential rain and flooding, Matthew 7 verses 24 to 25. He also compared those who hear his words but fail to obey them to a foolish man who built his house on sand. The house collapsed under torrential rain and flooding, Matthew 7 verses 26-27. Life brings many trials and challenges, and no one is exempt. Those who trust and obey the Lord meet the trials and challenges victoriously. Their enduring faith proves its validity, 1 Peter 1 verses 6-7 but those who fail to trust and obey do not survive trials and challenges. Like the foolish builder Jesus referred to, their lives fall apart. Context Summary Proverbs 8 verses 32-36 describes wisdom as having existed harmoniously with God before He created the world and everything in it. Now He urges His, sons, who might be students, to pay attention to wisdom, because wisdom blesses those who do so. However, those who reject wisdom receive injuries and death. This fits into the book of Proverbs' heavy use of both symbolism and general case truth. Verse 33. Hear instruction and be wise and do not neglect it. Wisdom counsels her students to exercise wisdom and to not neglect it. Like a woman calling out to anyone who will listen, Proverbs 1 verses 20-21, 8 colon 1, 4, Wisdom makes herself clear to those who are truly seeking. When Jesus taught in the temple and in open spaces, the people heard him gladly, Mark 12 verse 37. 
Luke 19 verses 47-48 reports that after Jesus cleansed the temple, he was teaching daily in the temple. The chief priests and the scribes and the principal men of the people were seeking to destroy him, but they did not find anything they could do, for all the people were hanging on his words. Believers ought to follow the example of those who gladly receive Jesus' teaching and hold tightly to his words. If we hear and obey his words, we will enjoy success in what we do for God's glory, Joshua 1 verses 7-8, Psalm 1 verses 1-3. If we refuse to abide in Jesus' words, we will easily be led astray. Instead of loving the Lord and His Word, Demas loved the world, and abandoned missionary work and the Apostle Paul, 2 Timothy 4 verse 10. Verse 34. Blessed is the one who listens to me watching daily at my gates, waiting beside my doors. Wisdom, personified by Solomon as a woman, Proverbs 8 verses 1-4 has already noted the value of what she can offer, Proverbs 8 verses 10-11. Here, again, the point is made that those who submit to godly wisdom are blessed. They resemble students who wait for the gates of their school to open or someone who is waiting at his door for an important visitor or message. Proverbs, biblical or otherwise, are meant as general observations or statements of common sense. It's clear that following wisdom does not absolutely guarantee a life free from hardship or suffering, John 16 verse 33. It should also be clear, however, that those who align with truth are more likely to experience success than those who are foolish. In that sense, wisdom can rightly speak of the benefits her lessons bring. To be blessed means happy. People seek happiness in a variety of sources. Some look for happiness in personal relationships. Some hope to find happiness in money or success. Some seek it in popularity or fame. Some think they can find happiness in illicit pleasure. But true, lasting happiness is found only in Jesus. He spoke of His joy, full joy, coming to those who keep His commandments, John 15 verses 10-11. The Apostle Paul counseled the Philippians to rejoice in the Lord always, Philippians 4 verse 4. His letter to the Philippians overflows with joy even though he was under house arrest. Our joy in Christ is indestructible and lasting because Jesus, its source, is indestructible and eternal. Verse 35. For whoever finds me finds life and obtains favor from the Lord. The Bible is clear that even the wisest, most faithful person can experience hardship and tragedy, John 16 verse 33. However, those who are wise obviously have a greater likelihood of success, and lesser likelihood of negative consequences, than those who are foolish. Just as a doctor can rightly tell a patient, eat healthy foods and you will live longer, so too can wisdom offer these benefits. The word translated, favor, here is our a son which implies acceptance, goodwill, or approval, all of which we receive from the Lord when we trust in Jesus. Our omniscient Savior gives life to all who believe on Him. John 3 verse 16 affirms that whoever believes on Him has eternal life. Jesus Himself said He had come to give abundant life, John 10 verse 10. The Apostle John affirms this truth in 1 John 5 verses 11 to 12, and this is the testimony, that God gave us eternal life, and this life is in His Son. Whoever has the Son has life, whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. In closing the Gospel that bears His name, the Apostle John explains the reason for His Gospel, Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God and that by believing you may have life in His name, John 20 verses 30-31. Verse 36. But he who fails to find me injures himself, all who hate me love death. In this closing verse of Proverbs 8, wisdom warns of the consequences of ignoring her advice, Proverbs 8 verses 1-4, 10-11. Our existence includes one, singular, most important choice, between life and death. It is wise to choose life, but many choose death because they love sin. The Bible refers to three kinds of death, 
and each one involves separation. Physical death separates the body from the soul, and Hebrews 9 verse 27 points out that everyone has an appointment with this kind of death. Genesis 5 lists men who lived for a very long time, but each of them, except Enoch, died because, the wages of sin is death, Romans 6 verse 23, and, sin came into the world through one man, and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all sinned, Romans 5 verse 12. There is also spiritual death. All unbelievers exist in a state of spiritual death, Ephesians 2 verse 1, which is separation from God in this life. Finally, there is eternal death, which is separation from God throughout eternity. Revelation 20 verses 12 to 15 describes this separation from God in the lake of fire, calling it, the second death, Revelation 20 verse 14. It is wise to trust in Jesus and thereby pass from death unto life, 1 John 3 verse 14, 5 colon 11 12. End of Proverbs 8 Please note The material used in this post, video is from biblaref.com which is from God Questions Ministries and is posted here to be read by Immersive Reader in the Edge browser. If you copy this material please follow these rules. Content from biblaref.com may not be used for any commercial purposes, or as part of any commercial work, without explicit prior written consent from God Questions Ministries. Any use of our material should be properly credited, please make it clear the content is from biblaref.com. Bibleref.com content may not be altered, modified, or otherwise changed unless such changes are specifically noted.